So today we're going to be discussing about GraphQL and how can we develop GraphQL with Spring Boot. So we have seen that GraphQL into our programming languages, right? So full form of uh, GraphQL is if you split out, it's a graph query language. So what do we understand about the graph? Graph is about relationship. Between the objects. For example, you have a customer, a user who has a particular profile. Okay. Now, when you say query language, what is query? Is it another language to query the database? No. It is about querying data sources which may or may not be a databases. Rather, we can say GraphQL is basically query language for APIs. Okay. And this GraphQL language, the need of GraphQL language, why it is being here, it's been created by the Facebook and it was open source later on in 2015. So what is GraphQL actually? GraphQL, what is released by the Facebook, was basically a specification. How to define GraphQLs? But it is not a kind of a reference implementation or how to implement it. You can implement it in a different languages, be it Java, Go, Kotlin, .NET, PHP, Python, and the framework you can choose. But it is not a replacement of this REST. So far, we have created REST APIs mostly, right? So we can say it's another tool in our toolbox, which can be used for query data from multiple data sources. The data sources can be your MongoDB in your NoSQL databases like Neo4j, or it can be cloud databases, or it can be other REST API or other GraphQL API as well. So, as I said, it's a query language, so we have to run a new language. No, we have to learn how we can implement the particular specification using different libraries. Okay. It can be implemented as all different programming languages. Now, the main uh, you know, objective behind the graph query GraphQL is going to be find out when you're going to be comparing GraphQL with the REST API. Why the GraphQL has been created on top of REST or as a mm -hmm. option for API design? Okay, it may have data sources, it may not have a data sources, it may have just wrapping our REST APIs. So, how the GraphQL looks like it's basically single endpoint, we know right and it's also schema base and within the schema what is defined it defines different types and there are a few well-known types are there like queries and mutation so it's a single endpoint we don't have separate endpoint for changing query or for mutation or for subscription you can query based on the type field and the collection. Maybe like example I've given, users and their permissions, okay? You can also do query pagination, query with count, query for all the records or query for specific record. When you query, you can also query by the 
query variables. Now when you do the GraphQL queries, right? We have seen the GraphQL query using our postman that we have to mention first the query name. Then as per the query name, we have to mention the required parameter, one of many. Then also we have to mention what are the response fields we require. So those response fields are basically need to be properly mentioned. That is the case. You cannot just, there is no option to for getting all the fields, a particular query, uh, a object may be there, right? You cannot get that. And there is no welcome. Why is that? Why that particular design has been preferred? Because what happened is when you compare over the rest, what you find is that you only get whatever you require. You means here is the client, client of GraphQL APIs. They can refer whatever is required because when we find our clients Different clients has a different skin aspect ratio. Some client may be handle devices, some may be tablet, and they can only show the data whichever they can showcase on there based on the skin side. For example, a simple tab may able to show more of the fields for that particular table. That can be also can be further increased if it's been tilt on a portrait or landscape mode. And similarly, if you have in your handle smartphone, there is like lesser amount of space. So each of these client now can use GraphQL to query whatever, you know, maximum skin resolution, those fields can be fetched for. Or whatever, you know, data that they wanted to showcase. Different application may have the same set of data, but they don't require everything to showcase, right? So for example, for example, you have a courses displayed to the student in a student app will require different data than the courses that's displayed into a course authoring system. There is required to be showing the lots of other details. So for when we student wanted to see the course name, course title, some of the metadata, and a launch button URL. But where you go into Course content creation, the course content uh, creation app may require the course hierarchy structure, may require the additional expensive metadata for each of the cases, label, publishing status, and other thing. So if we have like a same source, if we're using GraphQL over, so the client can decide what kind of, how much data they wanted to fetch. okay? So they are neither doing overfetching or they are neither doing underfetching. Overfetching means they are getting more data that is required. Underfetching means they are fetching less data that is what they require for their application functionality. And also, for example, say if you have two different services, one for user, another for permissions. So if you're using REST, so what you have to do first, you have to make a call to the first endpoint to get the users. Right, and then you make a call for that user to permission services. So you have to making two REST API calls out here. Rather than if you have what you can do with the GraphQL, you can query and you can query multiple collection in a single network call. 
so from that particular network call you can you know fetch in parallel both of the data and return to the client so client don't have to do multiple calls they can just simply do a single call it is the rest graph here API who is going to be querying the data from the rest endpoints and then it's going to be run in parallel and return the particular data. Now, when you have this like dependent collections, right? So, what you basically need to do, you need to first get the users you have on the JS client, you have a, like a on complete. So, on complete, you get the user, then you get the user ID from the response data. Then based on the ID, you are making another call. So you have then again that has a, like a callback. So you have like a callback here. So that also can be dissolved. In a single page, you can get the user and their permission together. And also just like your uh, query, right? You can use the same mutation to update multiple resources in a single network call. So we can say GraphQL has following advantage over REST. So what happened when the REST happened? So relatively, we find that GraphQL APIs is much more faster, but that's maybe relative type, right? One REST API may be faster, another REST API may not be. And GraphQL, maybe some cases become complex too when they have to traverse complex relationship between entities, right? So relatively, we can say it's comparatively over raised, it's faster and it's simpler. So now the, we can go back to the question, why we are not getting the all the records that are required, all the fields that are required in a single code, why there is no alternative uh, like a wildcard. So basically what happened is if you are returning in your domain object that you are returning, right, you added a new column. So what happened if you're using rest is that that column, you may add new column. So new column will be then automatically be available to all the clients that are there. Similarly, what if happen if you remove particular object the particular object may be uh, also automatically removed. It is client is not in control, whatever data you wanted to fetch. And if you have like a graph field, so if you remove a particular field, so automatically clients will start getting error unless they update their GraphQL client that's there. And that will going to be break, obvious, right? And obviously, when you add a new element, new field to your object, that particular field will not be fetched and they are not going to break. Okay. So, so over fetching will not happen when the newly added relationships are fit. That's why it's not well cut. It's a good API design that GraphQL has explicitly one client what data it needs to fetch. Okay. So in GraphQL also there is a concept called fragments. What are fragments are? So basically when you are fetching a particular fields, specific fields, multiple times into different queries, right? You can create a fragment on an existing type. And you can choose that I'm choosing the ID, username, and the count, right? And when you say your query fetch users, you're passing that ID to you can reuse the fragment part of it instead of repeating the same fields in multiple sections. Okay, so let us see how we can, you know, implement GraphQL. The GraphQL implementation can be done by different libraries. So one such library is Java Lib, GraphQL Java Lib. SPQR is another library, micro profile that you can use. And today we're going to be seeing how we can do it with the Spring Boot. So GraphQL implementation, how going to happen? It can be fetching data both by different SQL and NoSQL databases. It can also fetch the data from 
REST API. So on top of that, you can have like a Spring Data or a web client or REST template. On top of that, it's going to have the GraphQL resolver. OK, so if a query comes or mutation comes, those resolvers will try to resolve the result by calling the underneath API or calling the underneath that. And also, there should be a specific schema. A schema that defines what are the operations are possible under query, under mutation, and what are the different fields. Those are going to be uh, available at the data. And on top of that, it gives us an endpoint, and also it gives us a GraphQL kind of a GUI tool in a Spring Web application. Okay, so far, any questions? If not, let us see and demo. So far, any question why the GraphQL, why it is advantageous over REST? Hello? No, sure. no question. question. Oh. Fine. So now let's look into how we can create GraphQL with the string uh, library supports. The Spring do provide uh, annotation-based, high-level GraphQL uh, APIs design, or it can also provide low-level configuration-based resolver or data feature that they can have. Okay. So let's see one low-level API. Then we're going to see how we can do the high-level API. So before that, what you need to start with, we need to start with the GraphQL schema. So here we are only. Yeah. Hello. So this GraphQL schema you need to put under the folder name GraphQL, and you have like GraphQLS. So that is the extension, and. With the IntelliJ, you can you know view this by using the GraphQL plugin that is there. So here we are focusing on the well-known type that is query. So under query, or our kind of like select star form table or select table kind of column name, table name, kind of a equivalent we can find. Okay. So these are basically for querying the data. So what data or domain object are going to be using? Here I can divide one particular type, that is customer. Now, GraphQL has its own data types, but it doesn't have any kind of representation for date. So there you can just simply use uh, string. So it has float, double, numbers, ID, string. ID here means the primary key of your data source, a unit identifier. So here this customer has three fields. First field uh, being the ID. That is the type ID, that means quoted out of the box of doctor specification. Next one is the name of the customer that is a string, then this customer has a relationship with another type that is profile. So customer has a profile, and that particular profile is again has the attribute. What is the profile ID, right? The ID that is with ID type, then it has a customer ID. So that is also ID type. Here the customer ID that you got your ID that is there, which is being this particular file is a part of that is the ID field of your customer. Next comes the role. 
rule of this particular proof. Here we are not talking about any mutation, but here are the queries. Now, how can I define a query? For example, I wanted to get all the customers, right? So what do you have to do? So here we are saying the query name, customers, and in the array symbol, we're saying that it will return multiple customer object or type. Next comes the next query where you wanted to get a specific customer. So in this query, first query, we are not passing any argument. Next query, we are passing the argument that is customer by ID. That is the query name. Then we are passing the argument ID, and that is of type ID. And based on that, we are going to be finding customers. So let's see how this has been done. So first, four and foremost, our both of the types we are represented in Java record type. So record type, as you know, here we don't have to use the Lombok. For getter setter constructor, etc., we can simply put the data type and it will create getter setter constructor everything. So, public record customer it has an integer ID, it has a string, and it also taking a profile object. Out here, we have a profile object that has an integer ID, then you have the customer uh, ID, and then you have the role of that particular profile. Okay, now we have a, like a service. This is like in memory, we are doing it. We can also use the Spring Data and Repository. Here I've created two profiles and I've created two customers. One customer is belonging to one particular profile. Another customer is belonging to the another profile. Okay, so that been there, and it also has like for a particular customer, right? It try to find out the profile. Another one to get the profile for that customer that you have seen. Okay, uh, first one is returning all customers. Second one is returning all the customers. Next one is returning the customer where the ID field is matching. So these are the some of the queries, two queries, and their profile for a particular customer are being represented in a service. Now here we are not using any controller layer. So we're going to be doing the GraphQL configuration, how the data will be fetched for different paths of the queries. So here we have given, so again, this is like a low level, okay? This is not something we required. So this is like a configuration. Here we are defining a B name, runtime, varying configuration. Runtime varying configuration is injected with the customer service. Now here. We are creating a runtime configurator. Okay. And here is the builder type is runtime wedding builder. Okay. So this builder is going to be returning different paths and how the path is data going to be fetched. So this builder will register the different types. What are the types we have? We have the query type, PWFT, right? So those query types and their the query names, how they're going to be fetch, that details are provided out here. So let's see the first example. So builder type, when the builder type is query, and querying is the mean there's another object, which is your type runtime. Wearing builder, it's a data fetch. So under query, 
how it going to fetch the customers so it will fetch the customers here you have the environment and from the environment is of type data fetching environment so you can get detail from that so here the customer service get all customers so whenever on the query we say customers so this service method all customer has been going to be called now here if you wanted to fetch the customer by id so here if you wanted to fetch the customer by id then we have the customer service customer by id but we need to fetch the particular parameter that user is sending as a id field that the particular service required so here the customer dot id then from the environment itself you have get argument get argument what kind of argument we are expecting id column that we are what we are expecting why you are expecting id column because uh, here the query if you find as if you go back to our schema keeping this open and we are going back to our schema so in our schema this is the argument name right so based on that same argument name we are calling data feature environment dot get argument and it is returning as a type string so you are passing this to the entity so by the second method we are fetching the data now comes another type that we have defined that is customer and that particular customer has a profile maybe the profile being a different table or the profile into separate apis and based on that particular api for the customers for each of the customers i have to call that particular api and get the details so whenever i want to do fetching and get should be getting the details so let's just run this application and let's see how the application will start, what kind of responses they are getting. So I'm going to be running the application from here. And also in the application properties, right, we have enable GraphQL. So GraphQL is basically nothing but a UI tool through which we can query GraphQL right so that's we have enabled in our application properties now we are running our application code for our main method So our application is run. So where you can face that particular application code, we can face the application code out here. Local host 8080 then GraphQL. So here we find the customers uh, queries already prevailing. So here if we execute this, we are getting two customers that are there. Now here, if I don't wanted to fetch the full customer ID, or only wanted to fetch the profile or role, then I don't have to write a new REST API. I can simply change the argument that is there from the client, and I can fetch only the required data that is there. 
Similarly, if I don't want the ID, I can, you know, remove this. And I can call this. So here, how we can know what are the documentation are. So documentations are available out here. So here we can see we have root type query. And under query, there are two queries are there. One is this customer one that you can see. Another is the customer by ID. So let's execute the next query. Here, if we type, we get the detail. Customer by ID. Here we have ID field. Let's put a number that is two. And here we put ID and name. Here we are not selecting the profile. Let's execute. So now we are only getting the customer ID that is true. Similarly, if I want, I can also fetch the profile out of it. If I see here a type, I can fetch the profile. Similarly, I have a type name. So type name is coming as customer. If I wanted to fetch the profile, I can fetch the profile out here. So Graphville takes care of all the operation with the configuration. Here we have not created any controllers. So let's see how the association or relationship between the customer and the profile has been fetched. Now in the configuration, So in the configuration, what you mention is, if you need to fetch a profile from the type, what is our type? Is customer, right? Here we can see the type as customer. Okay. So we are saying that under the type customer, if I need to fetch the profile field, then we can say customer service fetch profile for. And here we are passing the source. What is the source? Out here, the source of the root object is the customer. So here we have pass the source. And what happened to the when you pass the source? We are comparing the object, and from the object, we are getting the from the list, we are getting comparing the exact customer, right? Because we are only wanted to see the customer profile. Now, here we are calling the profile out of that. So, there we are getting the profile. Either we are doing the get call of all customer or we are doing the a specific customer that is there. Okay, any question on queries on the low level API? So, in the response, there will be a data which is coming mm -hmm. attribute. Hmm. So the client control the attributes, right? What attributes do you need to fetch? So client can control whether he wanted to see the ID or he wanted to see the role accordingly, that particular data you to fetch. But when the customer profile need to be traversed, then that particular method being called for each of the customer. Okay, so if no more question, 
So if what is the disadvantage we're finding out here with this low level code that it becomes quite problematic because when you're going to be adding another type, mutation, etc. For each of the types, I have to come here and update the configuration manually. So for this field, if I need to fetch, what method I want to be calling? If this type, these fields are having a relationship, how that will go to be fetching? So that kind of things I don't need to. So like your REST API call, right? You have a higher level annotation based controller. Similarly, you can use those annotation based controller out here. So let's see the second project. Second project has a similar kind of, let's hold on on the mutation. Second project has a similar kind of uh, graphical schema that we have in the first project. And here we are using controller. So what the controller is going to be doing, it's a normal risk controller stereotype controller annotation has been given only difference you're going to find is the new annotation that maps for the graphical query and field so what is this all customer customer service all customer that we auto wear we put auto wear into the controller and then we are calling the customers that are there so it will return a collection of customers so here the query mapping and the schema mapping are actually similar kind of a annotation where the schema mapping explicitly said but what type and what field this method will be called right so here it will be called for type query and it will call for the query name customers so that is very simple annotation data method annotation that you are using from spring graphql and if you wanted to fetch a particular customer then we are can use the annotation argument to represent that this is the argument to our method right so here we are calling customer by id here we are saying arguments integer id so that id automatically get resolved and you pass into the method and that method is fetch the data either for the any kind of database or rest api and prepare the single customer next one is this one this one though commented why commented i'm coming to that now we need to fetch the profiles under the customer. So it's a relationship. So how can I fetch the relationship? So one option of fetching the relationship is to explicitly mention the type and field, right? Here the, the relationship itself is not a query. Okay. So you cannot use that. Okay. So what you are calling? We are calling profile, profile, customer. Here you can also use the uh, argument annotation or you can simply put customer and you are making a call get profile for customers so it's like a similar method what is in we iterate over the custom profile at the customer and then we're going to be fetching the record so so what happened when i'm going to make a call so in my db i have customers right so for two customer how many times this method will be called so i've added a simple log statement so see how many times this method will be called and what problem it will cause let's see so let us run this we can start running the main application
okay so our application is started it has the same kind of query right so i can just simply query or i can simply choose like all the customers and i also choose id and the name and the profile and within profile i choose the id and the role I'm cleaning up the query logs that are logs that are there. Now I'm hitting this. So I get the two object, right? Now what happened? The profile one that is here is been actually called twice. Rather than so that means if I have hundred customer so it will be the total number of external calls will be first fetching the 100 customer then fetching for each customer i going to be fetching or calling this resolving this profile one by one by one so this being kind of a in plus one problem so for example what if i need some time that when you are you know joining this two relationship into our GPA, what happened? How it fit? It fits the first record. Then for each say it's a customer and its address. So it got to fetch the customer. Then for each of the customer, it got to fetch the address query again. Okay. So if there are like 100, so 100 plus one time, that particular DB will be hit, or external services will be hit as per type, maybe. Okay, so how to resolve this? To resolve this, we have like a batch mapping option. So, what is the batch mapping does? Let us go back to the controller. Let us comment this one. Let us uncomment this line. Here we see a new annotation. New batch mapping. What this annotation is doing is basically calling the same relationship profile, but instead of passing a single customer. It passing multiple customers, the whole list, and then it returning a map. Here we have the customer and profile, like one to one relationship. So we put the map and the key that is there. So customer service. Then we are calling the profile and the customers. So there, if you like a SQL database, what you can do, we can get all the IDs and join the IDs. And send the IDs as a list to our in class of my query. So there will be just only two queries will be executed, and irrespective of the number of these customers, the query will be called. The method will be called only once. So is there any way to inspect that with the, uh, while using the patch mapping that the query is only called once and not with other yeah. and we, we have added the log so by seeing the log you can see how many times it has been called okay so now same way we just execute this now if you see this is only called only once and here all the customers along with their profile has been sent. Okay. Yes. Okay. So that's more or less states. Uh, how can we do this? 
Now that is basically we now I have not shown any example on the data or REST API call that you can simply add by adding a repository or a, another client service, right? Now let's talk about mutation. So what is mutation? So far we are querying the data. We are not modifying the state of the data that the application has. So mutation going to mutate or change the data of the application one of many services or one of many uh, repositories or data sources okay so just like in your REST services here we got to be using only single endpoint just like the query we can have many queries now here we got to be calling the add customer method and this add customer method or something that is the it can be same uh, mutations just like query it's a own type mutation so you can use the same mutation to adding the customer deleting the customer updating the customer etc so let's see the mutation changes. So let us go back to our schema. First thing we need to start with the schema also. So in the schema, we have added mutation. And here I'm showing only one mutation example. That is the insert. So in this mutation, what you are accepting, we are accepting two arguments. One is name, that is sting. Another argument is a rule, that is sting, which is going to be returning another customer. So, in the controller, what you can do, we can just like a query mapping, we can use the mutation mapping, right? Here we have the same name as our schema specification that it add customer. Then we have like name, and then we have the role. Okay. Two arguments are there. Okay. And here, these two arguments are passed into this at customer. So, what you are doing? Uh, here we need to generate the IDs, right? We are not accepting the ID. So I have created two atomic integer to generate the ID, one for customer, one for profile. So here I've created both customer ID, then I created the profile with the profile generator, customer ID and role. Then we have created a customer, customer ID, name and profile. And then I'm added to that particular list and returning the customer. So let's see that. Let us run the application. So when you are hitting it, we are getting two customers ID that is there, right? So let's create a duplicate out of here. Now here we have a mutation, right? So how to call that particular mutation? Here we have mutation. Under this mutation at customer, it's going to take two argument. One is name. Role. The same field that you are fetching.
software creation it will return us the so here we see the another customer is added why is the customer is started with one because the the id was started with one okay so have we been you know initialized we started with two then it should have been started with two but anyhow uh, here we can you know execute now we can see there are like three customer being added now i can add I'm adding another one now it has been come to and if i query out here now there are like four records okay so that's a mutation but i have not done like delete or update but the, that you can do simply just accepting the argument or you can also accept the argument of type object and you can make those queries any question so far No, sorry, sorry. So that's give you the very simple thing. What are the things we can further explore on this is how to secure this REST API endpoint, how to integrate with the databases. And the other thing is how to work with subscription. Okay. Those are the things we guys can explore further. Okay, guys, if that's all, then let me pause this and let me stop the.